Hey folks, this is Phoebe with Shrub Step Blooms. Just a few quick updates about how the farm is doing and some conditions we're experiencing and some cool flowers that I'm seeing. Surprise, surprise. Uh, we're looking at like 45 feet of zinnias right now. And up above, again, there's rubecchia and those fluffy white flowers or basket flowers, which we'll probably get up close with again because they just keep pulling me in because there's always so many bees on them. It's super cool. Um, so something we've been experiencing here is a lot of wildfire smoke. Uh, so we live in central Washington in Yakima County and it's not uncommon for there to be quite a few fires in the summer. Um, last year we got off really easy. It was a pretty cool like summer, all things considered, uh, and not a very bad fire year for us uh, where we live. This year has been a lot drier. A lot warmer and so fire conditions have been a lot more exaggerated um, and so we've been having really hot wind which drove a fire like 10 or more miles in the span of a couple days recently um, and it was about a week ago they've started to get it contained but we've been dealing with the smoke and just some um, unfortunate air quality and that's just part of where we live uh, that's the reality of it. Ooh, let's look over here. There's some lisianthus coming in through the uh, clover ground cover. I think this might be Corelli pink or something like that. The other thing that's happened with that fire, that particular fire, it's called Rimrock Retreat or Retreat Fire. It's burned like 20 or 30,000 acres, um, including the path that the irrigation system we are part of takes through the hills. Uh, so they, the irrigation district had us unrolling shutdowns and now the water is completely shut off because there's um, infrastructure damage that they need to repair before they can start running water uh, efficiently through the system again. So we're waiting for the water to come back on. When we were unrolling shutdowns, I watered pretty hard one day, or the last day we had water. I didn't realize that was going to be the last day we had water at the time. It just worked out and so nothing is suffering out here yet if we go another several days it probably will start to look bleak uh, in particular because we'll have over 100 degree days this weekend so today is supposed to be 100 tomorrow is supposed to be 105 <laughs> so um, that is that's also where we live we have hot summers that is what it is um, but when the irrigation is off a hot summer is a slightly different story up near the house, we've been hand watering stuff that's in pots and out here, everything's sort of just left to its own devices. So that's where we're at with some of those interesting conditions. I've been letting the like spur over here where we're just looking right now, just bloom out. It's not really pickable anymore, but um, there's a few that I wanna collect seeds off of. So I'm just been letting it go. days ago when I was out here picking I noticed this really dark color morph of the cherry brandy rudbeckia. So for me a typical cherry brandy is gonna look more like this but we've got this friend over here that's just incredibly velvety and kind of a deep brown purple color. And it's glorious so I've decided to probably not pick these and try to save as much seed as I can off of them to see if I can get anything that looks like this next year. They do seem to age out to a more red that would be more standard of the cherry brandy, um, but they start out like super velvety, super deep, rich color, and this would be great to have in the fall. So if I can get a few plants, if I can start selecting seeds that actually exhibit this flower color, that would be pretty phenomenal. I have a very important question. Does anybody actually use this highlighter yellow status? I was trying to find status that was lemony yellow, so I bought some random different yellows from different series, 
And so far they've all turned out to be this highlighter color. And there's probably some duplication in here because I started two different waves of status. I just don't really know what to do with it. I kind of tempted to pull it out, but then there'd be empty spaces where weeds could grow. So honestly, I'll just leave it. But if anybody has a suggestion for what to do with it, it's just so like hot neon colored. It doesn't really go with a lot of stuff. I still put it into the, the odd bouquet, but I use a lot more of the white and the blue and the pink and like lavender colors than I do of neon highlighter yellow, that's for sure. Ah, oh, there's a cabbage moth, super green. This is a dahlia I started from seed. I would guess from some floret seed that I bought a couple years ago because I have a couple of these kind of colorette style ones that are coming up, which I'm really excited about. So I'm gonna save this one. It's kind of promising. It's got some, some fun colors going on. I don't know if it would stabilize in a few years to be one or the other, if it would always be kind of like this. But then it's got this frill of secondary petals down here. So I'm excited about that one. There's a couple others that seem promising, like this is a seed dahlia. It's a little droopy, like on the stem but that might, that might change, I don't know. I'm not at all like into the dahlia breeding type thing, um, but I think it's fun to see what you can get out of the seeds. Ooh, look at this one. The big old bee on it too. Oh, can you hear Ava coming? <laughs> thrash, thrash, thrash. Um, the nice thing about these open-faced dahlias is they do seem to be really well visited by bees. So it's just really having a ball in there. Let's see if we can get the... Oh no, sorry bee. This one's also kind of cute, but I don't think it's one I would save. There's another one back in here somewhere. Oh. This one doesn't look good anymore, but there's a new one of it coming out and you can see it's another kind of collarette looking one. Um, it's a little more delicate and cute looking than that sort of apricot yellow pink thing I was showing earlier, but I like that one a lot too. But in general, I grew a lot of cactus style ones and I don't really enjoy that too much. So I probably won't pursue planting a lot of those next year, but they're fun to look at for now. And there's some, some interesting <laughs> things that happen. Like obviously I think this one's just... Yeah, this one's just losing its petals already, but um, that one's kind of cool. These are my gladiolus that got destroyed by thrips again this year. I tried spraying them with bricks, but I think I was too late to make any sort of realistic impact. So you can see the flowers, even though they come out, they're really damaged and they don't really shape up the way you would expect a gladiolus flower to. I'm going to leave these in ground this year and see what happens. This one didn't even make it to flowering, it's so damaged. But I'm holding out hope that eventually I'll be able to grow beautiful gladiolus again uh, once I kind of get a handle on how to manage the thrips here. A couple days ago, I noticed the celosia was starting to bloom, and pretty much, not pretty much, everything that's in this celosia patch here is saved from seed. Um, I'm hoping to do more of the cute corals and stuff next year, but. I saved seed off ones I liked in the last maybe two years, and I figured if I have all this seed, I probably should use it. So there's an array of different types. There's, I definitely saved seed from like a pompous plume mix and some crusted type mixes. And then earlier on, we saw the flamingo pink type ones, or these guys with the spikes here. I'm excited. These are the best looking celosia I've ever grown. So that's been pretty nice. Speaking of, look at these marigolds. I had a weird failure where it wasn't me failing. It was like one variety was really tasty and I didn't remember which one it was. I planted sunflowers in there since they all died, but I'm pretty sure it was one of the paler white varieties because those aren't showing up here now. Uh, but we've got, this is from the look of it, the cocoa series. And then this one I think is Mission Yellow. And then there's like Mary Helen and Cracker Jack. The Cracker Jack is down here with this. They throw these kind of open face style ones sometimes. 
um, which I like, but I don't know if other people like them since they're not such a full look. And then I've never grown eucalyptus and it honestly feels a little strange to be trying to grow eucalyptus because I grew up in uh, Central California where eucalyptus is invasive, but these are not supposed to be hardy to this zone. So they should be, they should die this winter effectively. But this is like baby blue or something like that. They're quite cute. I didn't really expect to be successful, but I'm happily surprised. I think I'll be able to start picking them in maybe another month once they put on a little more growth. And then I've been wanting to grow this for maybe three years and I just couldn't quite justify the price of the seeds. But since I'm, you know, trying harder to be a flower farmer this year, I did in fact plant Mahogany Splendor and it's beautiful. I am just so pleased with it. It's so moody and beautiful and just, it looks like Japanese maple a little bit, which is my husband's take on it. Um, but it's, uh, I think it's a type of hibiscus. Right, so it's also got that thing going for it. Uh, another one that's not hardy here, but I am just so thrilled with how well it's doing. This right here is what's supposed to be my second basil patch. Uh, it was supposed to be my second succession, but honestly it looks better than my first succession. So in the middle there's Miss, Miss Burns Lemon. On the back side that's gonna be cinnamon basil. And then this one is Amarato, which I really love and did it did really really well last year so they're not quite ready to pick yet they're still really uh soft so you want them to be slightly woody because otherwise they'll wilt in the bouquets pretty badly i did succeed at getting a second set of crests in so that's exciting so they're almost ready the i prefer to not have the little flowers going at the top when i pick them so once they look a little more uniformly beady at the top I'll start picking them so honestly probably next week there's another round of a me going in here um so slightly more successful with my succession planting this year there's a little bit of boop oh gosh this is a word that i struggle with buplarum you can see i also planted sunflowers in here because this didn't um come up all that well or all that evenly this patch came in really really well it makes me want to use millet as just a cover crop which i know some folks probably do um, so this is millet and some other ornamental grasses. There's a panicle type of millet back here. There's a pearl type with the upright stalks in the back. And then this is probably foxtail in the front, which is a little more fuzzy looking when it um, sets its seeds, I guess. And then I just really enjoy coming through and doing a bit of this action. Because it's just a soothing sound to me. And I do have to be quick about harvesting these because once they get even a fraction dry or once the birds realize they're here, they immediately start eating them. So that's how it goes. If you want to see an utter crop failure, we, we can look at this. They're white light pro cut sunflowers. I mentioned in the last video, a recent video, that we have insects that do a lot of damage on these. I looked it up more and there's for sure a type of moth that I'm pretty confident I've seen that attacks, especially the earlier planted um, sunflowers. So I'm contemplating just doing my early planting with saved seed next year so that if it's damaged like this, it's not a really a huge loss because this is the patch that I planted in May. And there's just, at first I was like, it's okay, I'll use them inside trying to find a silver lining, but really there's no way that I'm going to take these into the house when they're so full of bugs. But the birds have been working on them, and that's fine. We're just creating slightly different function in the garden than I was anticipating for these. This one was actually probably fine, but I think I just missed the window on picking it. Um, this was a lemon kind, the one that I thought was getting missed, but it definitely wasn't. So that's a lesson for next year, I think. And I might repeat my mistakes in a couple of years before I really learn. Um, but it was kind of sad to lose all of these sunflowers or, you know, have them not be terribly usable. Again, the birds will eat all the seeds out of them and that's great, but not really serving the purpose that I had intended for them. This here is Ringium. 
I think it's blue glitter or blue steel. It's blue steel is the variety. And I found that wasps in particular seem to really love it. And I know some folks say it has a weird smell and I think it's at a certain stage of its bloom cycle it does, but I haven't found it to be a problem. I also don't pick a ton of it, but hopefully you can see that this is just teeming with all kinds of different little creatures. Still haven't gotten around to deadheading all these snapdragons and not really in a big rush about it. With the wildfire smoke and it being hot and whatever, it doesn't seem terribly important when I've got other stuff I need to be doing to get all the deadheading done. And I did do a good chunk of it, so there's a fair amount that's already reshooting and setting up new flowers, which considering how hot it's been, is pretty impressive. And then the sweet peas too are still going. I haven't really been picking these. Um, they just are more for my enjoyment out here. But they, we had a week and a half of over 90 into the low hundreds. I almost said early hundreds, whatever. Um, and it still smells just absolutely delightful out here with all the sweet peas. But yeah, there's plenty to be done, as always. Alright, well, that's about what we've got going on. I mean, there's always more than that, but I doubt anybody has the patience to hear me talk about every single plant and every single, single project and all this stuff. Um, but I've just been really enjoying this zinnia row full of flowers and bees and all kinds of- ooh, there's a sand wasp in that one right there, in that green one. Anyway, uh, yeah, really enjoying the zinnias, obviously, as I get deeply distracted every time I wander down here. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you have something growing and keeping you happy where you are. I'm trying to capture, oh, there they go. There's at least four hummingbirds jetting around and doing their aerial combat stuff. They really like some of the trumpet shaped flowers over here, the, the cochiana and the kind of back there and then sulfur glasses, but I think they're mostly on the Nicotiana.